Hello everyone, welcome back to my European Space Agency career in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. We continue to build our lunar mission, but in the meantime we should probably take advantage of some of our other pads and maybe build something to go to Jupiter or Saturn or something. Well, I mean, I don't think I want to pick up a different program uh, and, and the Jupiter Observation Program because, well, we can't go fast with any of these right now. We don't have the confidence in order to go fast with any of these and it'll just take too long and we end up waiting for the funds to trickle in so we want to basically get confidence and of course there are the optional Jupiter contracts that still exist in this Jupiter observation program and so I think we'll pick those up and we're going to try to enter Jupiter's atmosphere I don't know how bad 800 kilometers is going to be but we'll also have to transmit data after going below 800 kilometers, so that's great. Uh, and then there's this orbital science, which I feel like there's got to be a catch, right? I mean, destination, Jupiter, orbit, apoapsis below a lot, and maximum apoapsis, yeah, 2 million kilometers. That's, that's pretty high. So I think we can do those, and they both grant extra confidence. The IO flyby does not, by the way, so we really don't need to do that. Uh, but we are going to take the Jupiter atmospheric probe, definitely uncrewed, and also the orbital science probe. Interestingly, it doesn't actually require us to transmit science, and we are going to try and uh, put some of the other science on there. Though for the atmospheric probe, we'll just we'll have something that can be done quickly too. So I'm blatantly assuming that we're going to want a heat shield and apparently there's lack of mount selections even though it says select mount there or nose. But yeah I don't think I want to heat shield the big antenna so we're going with the smaller parabolic antenna but that requires a larger transmit power and so I think this time we are going to go with RTGs if we can multi 100 watt RTGs. Well, we well, okay, I guess this is where I use my unlock credit. Um multi 100 watt RTG sure sounds good. 5000. But then the solar panels that we were using were 1668 a piece. So, you know, it's not that much more. And maybe if I could just have one, that'd be nice, but I don't know if I could counterbalance it exactly. You gotta put it this way. I don't think they've discovered a way to prevent me from putting it that way. I'm not sure. Of course, you shouldn't do that, but I'm just saying. It'll be more convenient so it doesn't stick out. But yeah, if we take a look at the antenna power requirements, the little RTG can do everything if, even if there's just one. And that'll save me the trouble of having a different descent pod. We probably don't need this much. I wonder about thrusters, and maybe we can have some formal thruster on this too, instead of just the RCS. I don't even know if the heat shield's gonna do anything useful. Yeah, we got 707,000 unlock credit. I think we are going to unlock the multi 100 watt RTG. There's a sort of cute. But this is this is probably the most efficient one. If we had two of these, it'd almost be enough. I'm thinking because it looks like we might have to symmetrize this and then we'd have too much. Launch cost part cost times 2.5 though. I wonder if we purchase this if we get credit for the multi 100 watt one. I think I'll take that risk. It'd be nice to just have a couple of them. All right, I'm gonna unlock that one. And yeah, this one is cheaper. I'll unlock it too. We'll probably need it. But let's see what the best mix is. I mean, this way it'll stay balanced, so that's nice. 
And you know, the, the three-way symmetry symbol looks like a radioactive symbol, so I guess that's too, that's good too. So this right now says that we have, well, let's see, not the sun, uh, from Jupiter with that tracking station and this transmit power, we have some bitrate. Let's take a look at the science. Barometer would be good flying low, so or flying high. So when we go into the atmosphere, that's probably the one that we want to transmit. And I guess thermometer as well. But instead of early camera, I'll send the basic camera this time. Oh, okay, do I want the improved camera? Because one downside is the mass, 40 kilograms. I'll send the basic camera. I, I understand that the improved camera includes the other one. Um, but, yeah, the mass gets to be a little bit iffy. Well, there's plenty of radiation around Jupiter. So, radiation detector 1. We'll put on here. And we have got two separate contracts. There's the atmospheric probe, which is this, and then the, the orbital science probe. We'll put more long duration ones with the orbital science probe. And we won't have this heat shield. I'll make the heat shield bigger. We want to make sure that we'll take as much as we can with the one ton. It's a fairly light mass on such a heat shield. Okay, so that will be the Jewel 3. Atmo. Just to remind myself. And it's just a little bit too expensive. Oh, we haven't tooled yet though. Tool all. Ah, it's still too expensive. Okay, well, we'll wait until we have the money for that, but I'll configure the Jewel 4, which will be the orbital one. We'll, we'll be keeping the big antenna, so let's see if we can get away with two snaps. Uh, mass spectrometer 4 is fine. Now let's go with the long duration one. Infrared radiometer 3. Is how heavy? Yeah, it's not too bad. Okay, 30 days. Well, that's fine. It actually still has plenty of delta V. Honestly, I, I think I'll just have three of these, just like the other one. Yeah, this is almost buildable. Let me tool that. Ah, still just barely too expensive. All right, let's accumulate some money so we can build these two. And this will be Jewel 4. Well, we're going to need staff at that pad. We have 300 applicants, but we can't hire all of them. Well, I guess we can, because they're applicants. We can hire all 300. So, all right. On they go. That's not a whole lot, but at least it gets us started. Uh, let's see when the next window for Jupiter is. Jupiter has treated us very kind. Oops, not that way around. That would be impressive, coming back from Jupiter, but anyway. Um, Jupiter has treated us fairly kind. Oh, that's quick. <laughs> has treated us fairly kindly so far. Okay. 58 days. Hmm. Well, the, the thing is... We don't need these that fast because our crew is not being getting trained that quickly, right? Uh, Sorolta will be done by February 12th, That's and we've already got two built. So, we can move them. So that would push that mission past February 12th, but we've already got one built. Let, let's just see. Oh, but they have a max. Uh, it's not getting affected by the extra stuff. Has like a max of 900 something. We're still making money. Um, maybe we can rush it. I think we want the Atma one first. If we rush it, we can probably make it. And we're still making a little bit of money. Yeah, we'll try the Atma one and see. That's the that's the higher risk one, and probably we'll need to retry for that. Let me just account for some rolling out business. That'll give us nine days to roll out. Okay, so somewhere between those two. 
Okay, rolling out the 26th. Well, that's when we were planning for it. So, our attempt to take advantage of this Jupiter window in order to get an atmospheric probe in. Who knows? Oh, it's not responding to that today. SAS on, throttle is up, and ignition. And launch. Okay, booster set. Okay, fairing time, I think. I'm a little bit confused though, shouldn't our, our RTGs have fuel that shows up? Did they stop that? Used to have like enriched uranium or something or some display of the resources of the RTG and then it would like decay. Do we get no feedback on that? And they do have a, like a 40 year limit but it doesn't seem like we got to see that at all. It doesn't even say that they're producing electricity. Right? That's a little bit suspicious. I was expecting some information here about them. Okay, well that's a little bit more time to apoapsis than I need. Um, let's coast then. Okay, well, the RTGs are working, that's for sure. I'm amazed that so far our commsats have still been working out for us pretty well. We do have two engines on this stage. Okay, that's enough of a periapsis for us to get by. Well, MechJab has given us a node and we will take that node. Okay, go. Oh. That for all doesn't work. Go. Okay. Separation. Uh, insufficient avionics. Oh, uh, it was probably locked. Uh, turned off. There we go. All good on electric charge now. So I guess it doesn't matter that I can't see the details of the RTG. I sort of missed that though. Okay, it's wandering. Oops, I forgot. <laughs> keep forgetting my, my throttle isn't actually controlling it today. It's actually been doing the job recently for a lot of episodes now, but suddenly today it's not. Maybe it's when I play Flight Sim, because the, the throttle works perfectly in other games that aren't Unity games. Like Flight Sim, every time I load up Flight Sim, the throttle works, you know, or any other Flight Sim game like VCS World or something like that. Unity games are the only ones that seem to uh, throw a fit with it, so... And it's never the joystick. The joystick's always fine. It's always the throttle. Now, we want to get into the atmosphere of Jupiter, but not immediately, I don't think. And for this, I don't care about the inclination. It might be good to be inclined to get like polar science or something. We don't know. Maybe, maybe not. Uh, we're not getting close enough though. I mean, capture wise, that probably doesn't matter. Use 800 ish to capture and finish off the stage and then up there in short enough time bring that periapsis down. I don't think that's a problem. I won't have to plot that just yet, but yeah, it doesn't say anything about we have to go in on a hyperbolic trajectory or anything like that, so this will be fine. So I'll just add, oh, I'll have a dummy maneuver as we enter just to check it out. Okay. So, it is on its way, let's get into daylight. We made this really quick window. Power is fine. Doesn't really matter what orientation it's in. So, as that heads out, let us proceed with other things. It does occur to me at this point, I'd never put a ladder 
on our crew pod and maybe their EVA packs aren't strong enough to make this. It's not actually that high, but maybe, maybe I should put a ladder. Okay, well, just in case. I'll add that to our landers. This one was already built. A day for a ladder is not too bad. Well, this one only takes one hour to add the ladder, so I hope I didn't do any changes to the other one that I didn't expect. Oh, incidentally, I added different signs to the Mark 1-3 pods, since we don't have three crew for the space television broadcast, and that's only space high anyway. I decided to put uh, the science that we could do with two crew in each one. We'll save the space television broadcasts for later. Okay, we've finished building the Jewel 4, so I'm moving everybody back over to this pad. We should probably get another window for Jewel, shouldn't we? Uh, Jupiter, shouldn't we? Not Jewel, Jupiter. For the Jewel probe, yes, but... Okay, well, let's add that alarm. So there is an opportunity there, but probably we will send our lander and our mission to the moon first before we get to that. It depends on how long they take to train. Now somebody said that they train better together, uh, so we, we are waiting for Sorolta to finish proficiency, then then we'll do it as a pair, uh, because they'll be launched as a pair going on, uh, going forward, so let us add people to this pad though. Okay, so our full engineer team is on ELA-6 now. That will shorten the rollout times, and if necessary, we will hire more people to shorten those out more. We have the money. Mission Apollo, both of these. 91 days. Well, that's the best we can do. That's how it is. Okay, their training is complete. Only added 114 days, even though they took 90 days to train. But anyway, they'll be hanging out for long enough. Let's launch one of the landers. Okay, we are launching the lander first. And obviously empty. We do have that tug in orbit around the moon to help if necessary. There's that going for us. Okay, we're going north this time. SAS on. And yeah, that up. And... Ignition. That looks like all of them. And go. We're past the speed of sound. Okay, shutting off some engines. Okay, booster set. And fairing set. Ooh, that's sloppy. Ooh. Uh, I don't know why one went off sloppy like that. That's worrisome. I, uh, I've seen that do that sort of thing before and then take out the core. We could probably carry the fairings for longer. Until staging. This has enough delta V. Oh, uh, I've got... My throttle doesn't work like that today. All right, but it is suborbital. That's what I wanted. Separation. And a brief ignition. Okay, that's all we wanted. All right, how's power? It is recharging, just with its little solar panels there. Not much. Okay, on to the moon. Okay, well, just about five days, but that's all right. We will take that. Okay, selling the fuel down. And ignition. Okay. RCSing the rest. It's reasonably equatorial, but once again, I would like to line up with the tug. 
And that's 7.5 degrees, so not great. Let's see if a mid-course correction will be mild enough. Oh yeah, that's fine. 2.5 meters per second to get a zero inclination with it. That gets a little bit low around the moon. Okay, that's fine right there. Okay, now we go. Okay, things are changing quite a lot over there. Okay, well, let's see what happens when we turn to the sun. That should be good enough. I decided not to go with the tracking solar panels because basically we, we want them pointed up anyway. And this was simpler and cheaper. And that does the job. We are recharging even with this stage hanging out. 50 kilometer periapsis is fine. All we really need to do is expend the stage capturing. And we'll leave it in whatever orbit we end up with and make further decisions later. It's almost in phase with the tug, but not quite. Not too bad. Okay, selling fuel down. Ignition. So it is in uh, lopsided orbit for now. And probably we will want to bring it down, but that'll depend on when and where and how we want to land. Probably we'll want to bring it down. I'm just letting the RCS expend itself. There's quite a bit of it. Okay, so we'll throw down and separation. And we'll push ourselves away. And also point at the sun. Or where the sun will be. So we basically have 4,600 meters per second, which is a fair amount. But we're not quite in low orbit yet. But for now, we will spin. And it will wait. It will wait for crew. Okay, it's got sunlight. It is recharging. And we can leave it be. It's another dark day here, but we'll begin rolling out lunar the next pod, the 1-3. And it seems like we can roll it out. I guess they already did the cleanup on the pad. So we'll see next time how this all works. Our crew is apparently ready. And everything is a go. So next time... Wow, it takes 20 days to roll it out. And that's with the staff all there. Okay, but next time we'll see how it goes. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.